Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies. As usual, we do have a guest who will help us understand all of the stories on the front pages of our national dailies. Uh, we have Chris Wandu. Good morning, Mr. Chris Wandu. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So I'd like to start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. And uh, let's find out what big stories we have on the leadership newspaper. Uh, looking at the front page of the leadership newspaper, zero allocation for fuel subsidy raises fear of price increase. Zero allocation for fuel subsidy raises fear of price increase. Uh, talking about the 2022 budget, you find details on page four. E Naira will increase Nigeria's GDP by $29 billion. Uh, President Mohamed Buhari is quoted on that. You find all of the information on page uh, eight of the leadership newspaper. CBN releases guidelines as regards the E Naira. So all you need to know about the E Naira. And uh, just before we move away from the leadership newspaper, you have Nigeria, US, AU, others condemn coup in Sudan. Nigeria, US, AU, others condemn coup in Sudan. Anambra elections would Anambra election will hold without rancor. Uh, find out all of the information on page six. I mean that's some assurance uh, right there. Bandits kill eighteen, abduct thirteen in Niger State. Northwest demands lion's share of federal allocation. Quite interesting uh, headline there. You also find Gumi cautions against proscription of bandits. That's the much we can take on the leadership newspaper this morning. All right, now to the Punch newspapers. Buhari unveils E Naira. MDAs may collect revenues and pay in e currency. Central Bank of Nigeria alerts banks to risk and fraud and threats. Apex Bank mints 500 million Naira e Naira, uh, issues um, 200 million to banks. It says also e Naira won't change Naira dollar exchange rates, and that's from experts. And uh, we can also find here Fashola, NLC, fault federal government, assets, sale, and privatization. Minister demands audit. Hoodlum storm Ogun school. Two teachers hospitalized, others flee. PDP crisis dipens. Secundus pursues suit as party plans convention. Also on the punch, Bilo confident of clinching APC 2023 presidential ticket, says SSG. Missing reporter, Bajabia Miller, canvasses divine intervention. Journalist protests. And EFCC approaches uh, appeal court on Kalu's 7.1 billion naira fraud retrial. A few others on the punch this morning. Federal government to end petrol subsidy June 2022. World Bank condemns 2.9 trillion naira funding. Um, $148 million uh, consultants pay. Buari governors meet. October revenue sharing suspended. Uh, finally, federal government plans 5 million solar powered households and 250,000 jobs. All right, uh, let's move away from the Punch newspaper and check out the Daily Independent. Uh, the Daily Independent newspaper board caption reads, E Naira will grow GDP by $29 billion in 10 years. That's what the president is quoted to say. CBN to empower 100 private companies every 100 days. Issues 200 million Naira to banks. Means 500 million Naira. 33 lenders join platform. And that's on page 6. Bandits attack Niger mocks, kill 18 worshippers, abduct 18. Very sad. 2023 elections. Buhari wants foreign envoys against meddling in local politics. And that's also on page uh, four. Nigeria will be left behind unless urgent steps are taken. Uh, so you find a group warning against that. That's on page seven. Arrest Gumi for saying declaring bandits terrorists will endanger Nigeria. Rights group are quoted on that. So you have a group saying arrest Gumi for declaring and saying that declaring bandits terrorists would end Nigeria. Igbo lawyers want to join suit seeking southeast exit from Nigeria. It's also on page 29. And you also find Anambra. 
Anambra Gubia elections. Federal government orders security agencies to deal with troublemakers. Uh, that's a very strong one. Well, that's so much we can take on the Daily Independence this morning. I'm sure you pick up a copy to get all of the information. Now to the Daily Trust. Buhari launches e Naira, says GDP to rise by 11.9 trillion Naira. Policy will aid government's welfare policy. Uh, it says 33 banks run in e-currency, a CBN mint, 500 million Naira. Also, gunmen attack Niger Mosque, kill 18 worshippers. NLC rejects compulsory COVID-19 vaccination. Still on the Daily Trust, Senators kick as EFCC transfers for uh, forfeited assets to AGF's office. Cano demands 1% special status in revenue allocation formula. And um, my mother-in-law asked me to poison my stepchildren, woman tells court. Still on the Daily Trust this morning, Northern Coalition asked uh, court to exit southeast from Nigeria. And uh, I think those are the stories that we can um, take this morning on the uh, Daily Trust newspapers. Um, I'll bring in uh, Chris Wandu. Good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. I think we can start the conversation from the e Naira and the concerns that people have. Some are celebrating it. And on the punch, it says the e Naira wouldn't change Naira dollar exchange rates. And that's what my experts. Uh, what are your thoughts? Thank you once again for having me. Before I delve into that, let me quickly um, join the conversation you had uh, initially on my darling team, the mind you. Uh, let me quickly just delve into that. You are smiling. <laughs> um, uh, it's just quite unfortunate that uh, we have an only who has come to teeth our pride uh, in mind you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's quite That's unfortunate right. what we are going through now. But I think we will surmount that problem, just like so many other things. But for us that are mind you, we have been a supporter of mind for close to 30 years. And uh, we've never had this bad. So uh, uh, we go and pray that something will be done quickly uh, uh, so that we, we can move on. Our, we have thought that this year is going to be our year. Don't forget we came second last year uh, in the Premiership. We thought that we we'll better that this year by win, winning the Premiership. But uh, what we are seeing now from Ole uh, doesn't seem to And just as Ms. Riley said, Chelsea had the same problem last season, and they quickly uh, sacked Lampard. And, and the man that was brought um, turned uh, Chelsea around within months. They won the Champions League, and they are uh, contenders for the Premiership this year. So I hope that we'll be able to do that as quickly as possible. Ole has not given us anything since he, he, he came to Old Trafford, and uh, we cannot continue to wait. So I just let me quickly start on that nice note. Um, back to the question you asked on e-currency, yeah. I, I don't have any problem with that. Um, I hope that all the razzmatazz and all the hope that has been built up will materialize. Sincerely, between the two of us, I don't know what e e that e-currency is all about. I've never used one before. I've never seen anybody using it and rest of it. But I've read a lot about it. Um, but it's just unfortunate that uh, it's the same CBN that some months back um, uh, throws the account of most companies that were into e currency, if you remember quite uh, uh, right, they just unfrozen uh, the accounts now. So, if they knew that that was the way to go, why did they take that decision? So, for me, that Nigeria, our problem has not been that of having policies. Implementation has always been a problem of Nigeria. Uh, we have all these robust ideas of how to go about this politically, socially, economically economically, all the rest. But when it comes to implementation, zero. Look at what is happening. We have one of the best constitutions in the world. Is, there's no constitution that is um, a, a totally um, OK. It is always prone to amendments here and there. But the one we have, are we implementing it rightly? So the same thing, so I, I don't want to join the enthusiasm, uh, we're going to generate 29 billion, uh, we're going to generate 1 trillion, we are going to do that, continue raising people, so, and tomorrow, it's something happens. So, but I just, we said that Aboki was the problem uh, of the, for, of our foreign exchange, but Aboki <laughs> practically doesn't publish uh, those things again. How have that impacted on the, the Naira as against the dollar? Since that, so 
I, I hope that the host being raised will be able to um, meet the demands of Nigeria on this issue of currency. But I still believe that what is more important is that a lot of information has to pass. Nigerians, practically, most Nigerians don't know what this thing is all about. Even a friend of mine, when it was posted on our platform yesterday, called me from the United States as CK, what is this e-currency about? So if somebody who is living in the US doesn't even know what e-currency is all about, you can now imagine. So a lot of information, why CBN is doing the CBN should also put so much money into educating Nigerians by buying slots on television stations like Plus TV, Africa, um, this way pass online and the rest of them to educate Nigerians on it, just as we did with COVID, all those information. If you don't put out the information there, people then get to know the information to do uh, to be then you are as good as um, just it's like looking to a, a, a beautiful lady in the dark. It's only you that know what you are doing and she doesn't know what you are the message you are passing across to her. All right. Okay, so let's look at the leadership newspaper. Uh, it, it might just uh, look like we would just have to end uh, the subsidy regime in 2022. Reads zero allocation for fuel subsidy raises fear of price increase. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? For me, we have said that we are going for total deregulation of the downstream sector of the uh, of the petroleum industry. If we are going to do that, let us do it. Whatever it's going to take, let us do it. So if, they, if we are going to remove subsidy um, uh, from petroleum, all well and good. Um, but the fact is that we have to realize that that to me is the only, if at all, is only product in Nigeria that's been subsidized by the government. It's only, it's only petroleum. Other, if you go to other parts of the country, there are all levels of um, subsidy, agriculture, uh, 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 you talk about human capacity, you, talk, you look at the area of education. In the United States, in, in the United Kingdom, kids go to school free. Children go to school in primary school. They go to school free. What are Nigerians benefiting from their government? Absolutely nothing. So, if you say you are removing the um, um, subsidy on petroleum, where else are you going to put that in order to be able to heat and be able to that so that it can affect the lives of the average Nigerian? The price of cooking gas have gone off the roof. It's about eight thousand, nine thousand in some places now. This is what was what cost about three thousand, three thousand five as of um, twenty fifteen when this government came in. A lot of Nigerians cannot even use cooking gas again. But Mr. Wan, do, 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 do you think problem to us? Yeah, do, do you think these prices will ever uh, come back to where they were? Um, because I've I've seen you know people complain bitterly about every single you know item in the market these days. They can barely afford them. So do you think that we might ever get back to you know those 2015 prices again for food stuff? Nothing goes up in Nigeria. Nigeria is the only country that um how do i put it now that um all, everything about science doesn't work we will always be told even in our local balance uh, anything we do way up it must come down even plane if you fly go up it must land but there is nothing in nigeria that goes up and comes down especially when it comes to prices of things so i don't see where this thing and we are having a, a lot of challenges when it comes to um, um the uh, products especially food items don't also forget that petroleum is tied to all this. If the product, you get the product from the farm, it has to be transported through the road. So it may you increase the prices of fuel. It is also going to increase uh, the transportation of those food items and it also increase the prices. So it, it, it's a good question. So uh, what I'm saying in essence is that we have serious problem here. We say we are down, uh, we are deregulating the downstream um, part of our, our oil sector. Then also don't forget that uh, with the uh, Petroleum uh, uh, Act that has just been uh, signed by the President, most of these NNPC uh, subsidiaries have been unbundled. DPR have been scrapped, the PPRA has been scrapped, and so many other subsidiaries. And it, I think two, just two agencies have been uh, have come up to uh, to take care of uh, the responsibility. But in that sense is that we should be very, very careful. If this is the only place where Nigerians are getting some kind of so-called all well and good. If you, let me tell you, my brother, if you agree, if that, uh, 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 if the petroleum prices increases, even the landlord in the house, you are, you are saying we increase his house rent. That is how it works. 
Even the houses that we are building in since 1950, the landlord will tell you that prices of uh, uh, this building materials have increased and the rest of it. So it has a ripple effect across board. So those, that is the situation we find ourselves. And I've always said it time and time again, like a broken record, the only way we can be able to solve this problem is by making sure that we revive our own uh, uh, refineries. Until we're going to refine our own petroleum in Nigeria, we will continue to find ourselves in this in this uh, terrible state. We vote thousands and millions and millions and billions and even trillions of naira for um, turnaround maintenance of all the refineries in Nigeria. No single one is producing one single liter of petroleum as of today. None. So, so whether you like it or not, this is the world. This is the only country in the world that produces crude oil, export it, and now import a byproduct like uh, petroleum. Nowhere in the world is that being done. But then the government seems to be waiting on Dangote refinery to come on stream. They want to buy into Dangote refinery. That to me is also a challenge because that will also end up being a monopoly. When you put the life of Nigeria in, this, in a single person, in the hands of a single person or entity, then it also means that they will determine the prices at which those products that are going to sell. So there will be no competition. Remember what happened in the days of Nitel, where we were stuck with Nitel, where you had to pay thousands of naira to make call. But it was until the GSM companies came that we started having that liberalization. Even when the GSM companies, two of those um, uh, companies, Econet and MTN, they tend to us that you cannot have per second uh, cost. I, I, I'm sure you still remember. Yes. It was not until another indigenous company, Nigerian indigenous, I don't want to mention their name, now came in and said, we can do this per second. And that is how the prices crashed. We bought SIM card for about 14,000 naira there. SIM card goes to off power about 100 naira now. So that is what happens when you have the monopoly. So those that are saying that, oh, the Damkote uh, banner is coming on street, we are going to have more petroleum by the time it goes. Let's also look at the point that it is going to be a monopoly and we may end up also being shortchanged because our destiny will be in the hands of just one entity. And that is the second. So the oh. problem, the solution to this problem is making sure that all our refineries in Nigeria works again. Then okay. that will be the solution um, to the problem. There, there's already been, um, I think, a contract with the Potakot refinery, I believe. So let's, let's see how that turns out. Uh, there's also something on the punch that I think uh, might be very interesting. It's on uh, Oju Zokalu. It says, um, EFCC approaches a prim, uh, appeal court on Kalu's 7.1 billion naira fraud retrial. Um, share your views on that also, Mr. Wandu. Yes, um, the EFCC uh, have the right um, to approve the Court of Appeal. Um, it's, it wasn't that Kalu was the, the uh, what we had, why he was released uh, from prison was not because that he was found not guilty. Let us get that clear. The court did not see that Carlo did not steal those money that attributed to the allegedly attributed to him. It was the technicality of the case that the court fought it and said no. So that was why he was released. The same thing happened with issues. It's almost similar with the case of uh, Olisa Metu. If you remember vividly, yeah. um, the, the judge in that case was said that uh, was, uh, was, was, was it to have um, danced into uh, 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 the arena, as we say in law. When a, a judge becomes almost like a party in a case, then his adjudication on that and that case becomes a bit faulty. So uh, that means you have become your personal interests have come into play. That is with Metu, but with that that of Carlo is that technical. I think the, the problem was that um, the, the judge who gave that judgment has been elevated to the court of appeal. As once you are elevated, you cannot come down to give a judgment on a case. In the law course, I think that was uh, if I'm very, very, I think uh, that was what happened. So it was based on technicality. So the court didn't say that Carlo had been said, he said the case should be retried. And Carlo, that. so I think what the AFCC is trying to do now is to appeal the judgment of the court. If they lose uh, at the appeal, they might probably go to the Supreme Court or start the uh, case afresh. So Carlo is not off the hook as it were. All right, let's look at the Daily Independent. Another interesting headline saying, arrest Gumi for saying declaring bandits terrorists will end Nigeria. So a, a right group is asking that Gumi should be arrested for saying declaring bandit terrorists would end the country. 
Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you have to tell security agencies to arrest Gumi? Don't they know what the right thing to do? Well, he has in not Nigeria been arrested. <laughs> no, no, I'm just no, I'm just adding to, to, to what you are saying, my sister. I'm only, I'm not saying, I said, does anybody need to tell the security agency, the DSS, the police, or whoever is that? Is it not the same um, uh, security agencies that arrested uh, 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 Nambi Kalo? Is it not the same agencies that arrested uh, this? Everybody that said anything that can cause um, or try to elevate the, what we have, the correct insecurity we have in the land, especially in the area of terrorism. I don't call them, it's calling them bandits. They are terrorists. I don't call them bandits. Because it's only the terrorists that will go to a mosque just two days, two days ago to go and kill 18 worshippers in a mosque. A sad place. Kill 18 people. Do bandits do that? Those are terrorists. It's also terrorists that we go to a market in Sokoto and kill 49 people. It's a, a terrorist group that we go to a school and kidnap and bundle over 100 students, uh, school pupils, and take them to the beach and be collecting ransom. So whatever Gumi is saying is, is that what is the body language of the government doesn't seem to support what most of us have been saying. And they seem to be comfortable with what's going on. What Gumi is doing is oiling the palms and, uh, of, of these um, terrorists because he's trying to give them some soft landing. You cannot say that we continue to uh, negotiate or pay ransom and don't look at uh, terrorists as being uh, terrorists, though that they are banding, they are going about their daily business and the rest of that. That Nigeria will know that there will be. What other form of treason is that? If you can say that Nigeria will not exist again because. Would Nigeria, um, Nigerian government um, is, is being called upon to deal with terrorists. Even that segment itself, that was the spirit of our security agencies who are paying the price, the high price of losing their lives every day fighting these terrorists. A situation where you see them arresting these terrorists who have killed several Nigerians, bring them for prosecution. The next thing they, you see that they grant them amnesty and start giving them a starter part, giving them also this say that they are repentant uh, bandits or whatever the rest of them. We cannot continue this way. A nation where the lives and security of their citizens is not guaranteed is more or less like a banana republic. No, no one's life is guaranteed any longer. And that is the terrible situation we're having ourselves. So, and so many, the government also have come out to say, through the Minister of Information and even AGM, to say that they have about 400 people that have been identified, not only as sponsors, but also terrorists, and they'll be prosecuted. My brother, my sister, have you seen any name published? Have they been prosecuted? He said, what did the NGF do? The police came back last week to announce the sponsors of uh, Ibuho, announce the sponsors of um, Nandekalu. What of the sponsors of terrorism that is practically grounding the, the whole of the North? Where the AGF comes from? He has not named a single person. And that is why we're having this kind of issue. Where some people believe that some, some people seem to be untouchable. If you are from one part of the country, you seem to be an untouchable. But it is even the north where Bumi and his cohorts come from that is even getting more affected. Just last week, the red track from Kaduna to um, uh, Abuja was bombed, was destroyed. And they said they prepared it as good. They've tried the roads. They succeeded. They tried the rail. They succeeded. Where are they going next? <laughs> Don't be shocked if it could be the a court for bid. So I think until something gives, and this government give us the assurance that nobody is a sacrificial lamb who will continue to face this um, dilemma we are finding ourselves. And some people are not happy the matters as well. Even uh, Governor Erupa, who initially initiated this idea of negotiating with these uh, terrorists, have come out to say that they should be declared terrorists. 36 speakers of houses of assembly came out last week also to say that these people should be declared terrorists immediately. But see, Gumi, what he's saying. And nobody's saying he's speaking me up. Or if I, there was a point that said he was arrested or he has been invited by there. He came out to say nobody invited him and he's in his house. What do you make of that? Well, well still talking about, you know, the insecurity challenges, you know, and our approach to dealing with these issues. The Punch this morning says, missing reporter... Bajabe Abmila canvasses divine intervention as a journalist protest. Um, Mr. Wandu. 
Yeah, sorry, I didn't get you saying, but I mean, I mean, I said what? Sorry, Canvas's divine intervention as a, a journalist protest, um, and that's with regards to a missing reporter. Yes, um, but I mean, I made that statement as the conference of Nigerian Guild of Penitents in Abuja that just ended, um, divine intervention. Although some people have said that uh, I'm not a good uh, student of the Bible, that there's no way to study in the Bible that God helped those that help themselves. But yeah, but if right from when I was in primary school, I've been hearing God help those who help themselves. If you don't help yourself, there's no divine intervention. God will not come down from heaven to come and help you. It's not possible. That is why he gives you leaders. That is why he gives you brain. That is how he gives you all the necessary inventions to work with. But if our leaders are now saying that we should leave everything to God, then okay, let, let us leave everything to God. We should even do anything. Let the soldiers also put down their arms. And let us wait on God to come down from heaven to come and uh, uh, to find the work for us. It's not possible. Nowhere in the world are we more Christian than uh, more Christian than Israel, where Christianity came from. Are uh, Israelis not fighting? Are they not dealing with terrorists? Are they not killing them? Are, are we more uh, more um, Islamic than um, those in Saudi Arabia? In Saudi Arabia, they are not fighting terrorists. Are they not dealing with them? Is it not happening in Iran? Is it not happening in Iraq? Is it not happening in Syria? Nowhere in the world will anybody say that it's waiting on divine intervention to solve Nigeria. We cannot divine intervention, and that is what they have been using to divide us. When the elites find it convenient, they use religion, they use ethnicity to divide Nigeria. Then they also should resign and let God take control. Let God take control of a House of Representatives, and God should be just the administering the House of Representatives instead of Bajabi being, Amin mean, being the Speaker of the House of Representatives. It is either we just come down from, uh, from uh, this uh, uh, unreasonable uh, uh, talks. We need to do the needful. Any country that needs to progress has, the, has have to do the right thing. Doing the right thing, you cannot continue to do the same thing every time and expecting a, 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 a new result. It's not possible. The leaders, our leaders, should be very very holistic in their approach to issue. One, they are dis they are totally they are disconnected from the people. Even the, the members of the National Assembly and the expected, they are disconnected from their constituencies. How I many of them go to their constituencies to even hear what their uh, constituent members are saying? It's only when you see the next election come, you see them, they'll be running and going out and uh, giving a grinding machine, motorcycle, and the rest of them. And that's where it ends. What we need now is leadership. What we're lacking in Nigeria now is leadership. We don't have the right set of leadership we need to take us out of the current problem we're having. Be it security, be economy. Or we have leadership at the highest level, both at the federal and the state level, where we have leaders who can be able to take and approach some of this issue from a nationalistic uh, angle. We will continue to. I'm not talking only of the federal government, I'm also talking about the states. What are the governors doing? If you go to be, practically everything has collapsed in the states, everybody's waiting for uh, uh, Abuja. They cannot even take out of the bus to be able to raise, be able to raise IGR within their various states. To be able to do it, what they wait for is every month they go to Abuja to go and collect stipend and share it among themselves and we move on. We don't need any divine intervention. What we need is um, human intervention and getting leaders who can look at our problem and be able to solve it for us. That is why we elected them. If they cannot be able to do that, then let them resign. Okay, so it's, uh, uh, there's always a human part to every miracle, uh, just so, as you would want to say that faith without works is dead. Okay, let's quickly check out the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Quite interesting. Anambra governorship elections. Federal government orders security agencies to deal with troublemakers. Uh, the elections hopefully on the 6th of November. And the federal government is saying there will be an overwhelming presence of, you know, security to ensure that that elections happen. Another instruction is that they should deal with troublemakers. Uh, what do you make of this statement? The number election was good, irrespective of whatever anybody it is. That election was good. It is now within the ranks of the security agencies to make sure that they secure and number to make it possible for people to come out to make it, to pick a candidate of their choice who is going to be the governor of that state for the next four years. For anybody, I've seen iPod talking about sit at home. Uh, no sit at home, anybody that comes out. Yes, it's going to affect that. Uh, but if, what you can be rest assured, there's going to be voters apathy. apathy. Because already, every, you see what happens every Monday in the Southeast, irrespective of what people say, people still stay at home because of fear to their lives. 
Now they are never saying government are even got a, a bit further to say, okay, since you people are sitting at home on Mondays, we are moving the school, uh, moving schools to Saturdays. So no school on Mondays, the Saturday we are going to have um, schools, um, um, uh, the people is going to school on Saturday. Will that solve the problem? That won't solve the problem. But for the November 6th election in Anambra State, it is, if it does not hold, security agencies should be held responsible. And that is the fact. Because we are having an election in just one state out of 36 states. They will not have an election in the whole of Nigeria. So they have no reason not, not to be able to secure Anambra for that election to hold. Then, good enough, the federal government has listened to the uh, yearnings of most uh, members of IPOP and people of the South is that Nam Dikalu should be brought to, uh, to the court. There has been this situation that, oh, he has been killed, he has died in prison, it's not true, and the rest of them. All sorts of propaganda around him. But good enough, he was brought to court a um, few days ago, and everybody saw that Nam Dikalu is um, head and head, and that is a good PR for, um, for the federal government. But my challenge is also, uh, has always been that how long can the Southwest be, continue to be a burning ground? How long can Southwest, where I come from, the, the economic, uh, the economy, economy is going down economically, socially, and politically? Nothing is happening in the Southwest. Investment is not going to the Southwest. And that should be worrying the, the governors and leaders of the Southwest, not the federal government this time around, because to whom much is given, much is expected. They are the chief security officers of their various states, and they should be able to secure their state using all the necessary apparatus to be able to secure them, make life and property secure for their people to be able to go about their commercial and um, social activities. People don't even go for barriers in the southeast again. People don't go to parties. People don't go for, to club. Social, economic, and social life are practically collapsed in the southeast. Some of us from the southeast can't even go home because you don't even know what will happen the next time. This is not good enough, and I've said it several times. Look at what is happening in the Southwest. The Southwest came up with their multiple, um, the homegrown local policing and the rest of them. Our people in the Southwest have been talking about a Bugwagu for how many years now? Nothing has come out of it. And they are now talking of December. Oh, by December, we see what we can do and we'll come with that. That is not showing leadership. And it comes back to what I said earlier. Before. When you have leaders who don't have the vision, when the vision is not right, you cannot get the mission. Um, you cannot get your mission right. So what they are lacking now is the vision. They lack the vision. And at the end of the year, their mission as leaders cannot come true. But whether um, uh, uh, whether the election for November 6th we hold in Anambra or not, that is a bygone conclusion for me. That election must hold and a, mean, a winner must emerge. Or else we run into some constitutional problems. But, but is it okay for the president to say that you know troublemakers should be dealt with? Because... I mean, that particular statement, does it worry you? Is it okay to make such statement where we have the law to take care of things? Some of us, we are uh, felt so bad and ashamed when the president came out to say that we deal with people in a language that we understand. That was very unpresidential. But if the president come out to say that troublemakers should be dealt with, of course, I don't see any problem with that. Are you saying that we shouldn't deal with troublemakers? What no, we can now identify now, who are troublemakers and what, what can you identify as troublemakers? If it's just mere agitation that people are just making protests and the rest of them, those are not troublemakers. Those that went to Lekki uh, a few days ago to, uh, to mark the one year anniversary of Essas, they're not troublemakers for me. Are you saying that they should be dealt with? You can't deal with those. Or Mr. Wandu. We know what we're talking about. Mr. But anybody that comments any trouble, and that your freedom stops where my own begins. So if you stop me from performing my duty as an individual, as a Nigeria, as ensured in the 1999 constitution as amended, then that is a problem. Right, and I expect the government to protect me. So for me, I don't have any challenge with troublemakers being dealt with. But let us be very holistic in our approach to issues like this. All right. Good thing we, we have um, an extended conversation about this today and also looking at the uh, failure of governance, you know, with the, you know, the whole of the Southeast. And I think that's some of the things that we'll talk about later, to, uh, sometime this morning. Uh, but I want us to wrap up, you know, and I want you to quickly, you know, speak, you know, uh, about, you've mentioned that there will be a governor from the 6th of November, regardless of what the IPOB wants. Um, so I want you, you know, to, you to share your thoughts on what exactly the IPOB hopes to achieve um, with this. And why don't they 
see that regardless of their sit-at-home order or not, there will be a governor. The governor could be from the APC even, um, and they've achieved absolutely nothing. You know, why don't they see that these, their, you know, these moves completely fail? Well, um, first of all, um, some of us, I personally, uh, I'm not a member of IPOR. Um, I do not support iPod. But some of the things, issues being raised by iPod resonates with me as an Igbo man. If you understand what I mean. Yes. It resonates with me as an Igbo man. And personally, I also think that there should be different, we should have different approaches. And that is where, personally, I disagree with the leadership of um, um, uh, iPod. I would have also believed that, for some of us would believe that we should have engage in a more intellectual approach to the issues at stake rather than the boot and jack way uh, uh, iPod is going about it. But you ask yourself, Masop was for many years trying to raise the issues with the problem within the Southeast. Not was done about it. It was because Masop failed that iPod came up. So if those agitations by the Southeast have been addressed. I don't think we've gotten to where we are, and that those issues have not been even addressed till now. The body language of the leaders and the president and the rest of them is not even showing that. So, but I, 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 I my personal opinion is that I should find a more. If this what is the way it's going about this is not working, can we find a much refined, better way of approaching this? I can tell you for sure that if I is well organized totally organized with the kind of popularity it's having in the Southeast. If I could present any governorship candidate in the Southeast, in any of the five states in the Southeast, it will win. I'm telling you that for free. If I could present a, a candidate, Abia, Anambra, Imo, Enugu, Eboi, bring any other uh, political party, and I will say, this is our candidate. This is the person we believe that can be able to do it for the Southeast. Whether you're a PTO or PDP or whatever, that candidate will win. And I think that would have been the approach for me. Because by so doing, you, you are not contributing to the governance of your own area. Your voices will be counted. You cannot make your own, make, make your own inroad. Make your own, some of those things you are agitating for, you bring it to the fore. But we cannot continue like this, where it's conducive, oh, it's either Biafra or nothingness and the rest of them. Yes, let there be Biafra. But is there Biafra coming tomorrow? Is it coming today? All well and good. No. We cannot continue to cripple the economic and social activities of the same people we are agitating for by making sure that they are totally crippled. It doesn't work that way. Nobody does that. You should be empowering your people, not improving them. And that is a problem. That is the only problem I have with IPO. But whether the message they are passing across, whether it's right or not, I, for me, totally I agree. If it's for agitation, and the emancipation of the Southeast, and some of the things that so many of us have been talking about for so many years now, the neglect that is so paramount in everybody, somebody is coming and telling, oh, you are talking of neglect. We are giving you, I don't see the second Niger Bridge is about, uh, is about being completed and I ask, is it only the people of the Southeast that are going to use the second Niger Bridge? The second Niger Bridge starts from Asaba, Asaba is in South South. And it takes everybody that goes to the South South True, they will pass through there, and other parts of the country. So don't tell me that oh, you are giving the uh, people of the south, uh, southeast, the uh, second Niger Bridge. That is an achievement. That is not an achievement. Don't you have the third mainland bridge in Lagos? Is it not the federal government that built the third mainland bridge? Don't you have bridges in other parts of the uh, the country? So why would you second are you fronting the second Niger Bridge as a as something very very uh, important they are doing for the south? It is not for the south. It, it is for the betterment of Nigeria. Yeah, There's nobody in the status is going to carry that bridge on the head. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I think, you know, I, I believe there is, you know, lots of people around the Southeast or from the Southeast who also agree with your perspective. Um, and, of course, I'm sure that's also, you know, one of the reasons there's many people from the Southeast who also agree with the IPOB. They may not, um, you know, necessarily agree with their motives or their methods of agitation, but they agree with, you know, their, their perspectives and, and uh, what they think. But w what I'm trying to figure out here is how come, um, or, or, or does this really tell the level of thinking of the IPOB? And I'm talking right from Namdi Kano to Ima Powerful, to those on ground who really have continued to push the same narratives. 
don't they see that it's not working and it's not leading to any, you know, anything beneficial for them or for the people of the Southeast? Because Namdi Kanu would not be released because he shut down the Southeast. Even if he shut it down for six months, he would not be released. That's one. Second, there will be a governor, you know, from the 6th of November in Anambra State, regardless of what the IPOB says or what they do. Even if it is five people who come out to vote, there will be a governor. And so don't they see that these tactics and these, you know, the, the approaches that they have are failing and they're not in any way useful? What you're having is a carrot and stick approach. That is what is happening in the South East now, what you call the carrot and uh, stick approach. Now, that agita agitation won't have come to place if the leaders and the leaders of thought in the South East have been, have been doing what they're supposed to do. It's because that this uh, distrust between the younger ones in the South East and their leaders, is it with Ohanese, is it the governors, is it those representing them and the rest of them, the, the average youth in the South East have seen these people as sellouts. And what they are trying to do is to take the destiny, their destiny in their hands. And they are believing that if they don't make their voices hear, then nobody is going to hear them. And that is why some of them are going this narrow way. And I will tell you for free once again that it's not everybody in the South East that agrees with um, IPOP. It's not everybody that is a member of IPOP. It's not everybody that agrees with the approach. But the common ground for everybody in the South is that the message being passed by IPOP is it right? For me, I will look at the message, not the messenger. And if we're able to be able to uh, dissect this, then we can be able to get a better approach. So, is the disconnect until the, the uh, younger ones in the South is come to believe and respect and trust their leaders and the opinion leaders, as it were, then we continue to have an average in those days, a, 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 an essay, we call a meeting of the younger ones in the community. This is how we should go about this and the rest of them. And they will listen to them. But because most of them are not sellouts, they have sold themselves to most of these, they are so-called oppressors. So they no longer believe in them. So when they are talking to them, they are not listening. So the first and foremost thing is maybe to bridge that gap, a gap of trust between the younger ones and the leaders of the South Southeast. If you can make bridge that gap, then we are getting uh, uh, somewhere. But as I've said repeatedly, the approach by um, iPod, some of some of these approaches is not doesn't resonate with me. You cannot continue to cripple the economic uh, values of your place or your uh, people, the people, same people you say you want to emancipate and you want to help to come out of. You are not trying to impoverish them by saying they should sit at home every Monday and uh, they should not go out. They should do that. It doesn't help. What they should be doing now is that being able to be able to harness their thought, focus on the trial of Unam Kano. Let us rally every um, Igbo man, irrespective of whatever they feel, to make sure that Unam Kano gets a soft land on this. When we've done that, I want to see some kind of discussion between the federal government and Unam Kano. No matter what, you cannot remove Unam Kano from the equation. It's not possible. Irrespective of whatever you call him. He has followers. And you have people that listen to. But the challenge for me is that it is also seen that I call that is even losing um, the command. Because if you listen to what Senator Abayime said recently, we have close to about 30 other agitating groups now. So it's no longer I call. So even if I say, don't go out on Monday, some people will come out and start enforcing. If you, and that is what is happening. Remember, I call came out recently and said that no, people should go about their duties on, on, on Mondays. But some people, some fifth colonies came out and we are going around killing people, burning vehicles and the rest of them. I'm not sure those people are members of IPOP, but those are the people that believe in what IPOP will and lash on the message delivered by IPOP and they're not taking it to the next level. So those are the issues we are battling now. It has gone beyond IPOP. Most of the things happening in South East, I don't believe it's only IPOP. And it goes on our security agencies, especially the DSS and the police, to now look deep and be able to find out who are the people behind this and their sponsors. Just as we say that they should be able to identify the sponsors of these terrorists, help in the north and deal with them. Else, we we'll continue to go through this. Mr. Story, Wanda, do you think happen. do you think the IPOB would be successful? You know, taking advantage of Nigeria's um, electoral system. Do you think that they would be able to have 
you know, people who believe in their ideologies in, you know, places in the, in the, in the State House of Assembly, in the governorship seat, in, in the local government chairmanship seat, can, do they have the numbers to be able to place persons that, believe, you know, have their interests in those positions? Without making, without sounding immodest, there is no governor in the southeast that is as popular as in America. Take that from me. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I, I get that. You know, but I, one, one of the things that they've also said. Is, no, no, let, me, let me tell you where I'm going to. I was shocked. I'm a, I'm a student. I'm a final year law student in one of the universities. I was shocked just yesterday when one, one of my lecturers, who is a professor of law, was talking about in America. And some of the things at that intellectual level I was shocked because the average people, people just think that, oh, the followers of uh, IPOB are with this class, they are this. Uh, professors of law believe in Namdekan from the Southeast. So many people, you'll be shocked. Some of them cannot come on TV and say it. But you need to hear what they are saying. They are, so, what I'm saying is that it goes just beyond just looking at Namdekan from the Southeast. What I'm saying is that I think this should be taken to the next level. I personally, if Namdekan comes out tomorrow and say, this uh, um, governorship candidate is the person we are backing in Africa. This governorship candidate is the person we are backing in Anambra. This governorship candidate is the one we are backing in Nemo and the rest of them. I can assure you that nobody, and take it from me, if that election is not rigged, can beat that decision. Why do you think that somebody like uh, uh, Ifa Yuba say you want to go and see Nam de Kalu? It's a governorship candidate in Anambra State, it's the coming election. Did you know that it's a political motive? That there's a political motive behind this? He wants to rally Nandi Kalu and his uh, supporters to himself so that he can win the election in, 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 in come November. That's that just asking the court to please allow him to go and see Nandi Kalu. He will use that. So many of them will use that. But uh, I personally still, I still say, from intellectual angles, that I should change the tactics. We should be more engaging now. Yes, we all believe that there's a need. There's nothing wrong with anybody agitating. Okay. Go and look at what happened in Sudan. For several years, we are fighting. Yeah. How can they end and the end of it, what do we have now? We have Southern Sudan and we also have Sudan. That's just a coup in, in Sudan, in the other part of Sudan. But at the end of it, the two countries we are just divided and they were there used to be Czechoslovakia. Remember. Okay, so I'm sure that you know that, that country has been organized. So there's nothing wrong in people agitating. Sorry, Mary, I'm coming to you. That's fine. There's nothing wrong in anybody agitating. There's nothing wrong for even in Spain. Spain as 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 uh, a lightning or whatever. Spain is one of the most developed countries in the world. But you see what is happening with those from Barcelona who say they want to go their separate ways, that they don't feel like um, being with uh, the government in Madrid, and that has been going on for. In fact, the leader of that group is uh, I think is currently in uh, Paris or wherever where he was arrested and released. So there's nothing wrong in agitation or people asking that they want to leave. But the basic thing is that what approach you go about it, whether we like it or not, if it's going to happen that Nigeria at a point we um, get to the point where we'll be separated along different lines, and it will happen, and the better for But if we're going to live together, then we make sure that every part of this country sees itself as one. The problem we're having now is that certain people from other, some part of the country feel that they are more superior than the others, and that is what is going this agitation. Or to be able to make everybody feel that, yes, we are truly Nigerians in the true sense of it, agitation will continue to, to rise. Like you have mentioned, you have talked about the need for IPOP to engage and, you know, have that conversation. I've also seen some other persons asking that the youth should engage, let there be dialogue. But how can they engage when they have been proscribed terrorists? And you already know that, uh, you know, government is not... Uh, encouraged to get into conversations with terrorists. That is part of the, that is part of the engagement I'm talking about. Whether you like it or not, it is better to judge up than war. war. What are we losing? A lot. We are losing a lot with this with all this uh, kind of problem we are uh, we are facing, especially in southeast, in the north. And rest of the, is it not someone that came out and said that we should be negotiating with um, terrorists? Has anybody said anything against that? Haven't you seen governors of the uh, from the north saying that these bandits and so called terrorists should be that we should negotiate with them? Governor Kasina said it, Zampara said it, Governor Kaduna said it, and so many other governors from the north. These are terrorists, so these are people that have been identified and killed. 
To me, I both have not gotten to that point. It's just some miscreants that are going around and misbehaving in the southeast and the rest of them. But I believe that if you come to a round table and sit down and look at some of this, there's no way that the government can call an Inam de Kalu or call the elders from elders from the southeast together and say, let us talk. There's no way the elders in the only of Ife just came out from a meeting with uh, the president just a few hours ago. I'm sure you listened to what he said. You must have heard what he only said. Where he said the president reported uh, Iboho to him yes. and the rest of them. That is how to go about it. So if you have those desires of thought, you can be able to make them to call, bring these people to the table and let us discuss what are the issues. They have, if the, the NLC have problem with the federal government, the usual ultimatum, they say this and this and what we want. As we have problem with government, they say this and this, what will government do? Government will call us to come, let us negotiate. They call NLC, come, let us negotiate. Okay, out of these 30 demands, we can only do 15 for now. Can we do 15 and start looking later and see that as we will call strike? NLC will call up the strike. That is human capital. That is public relation. That is what is called ADR, a law. Now, that is the way the world is going. Alternative dispute resolution. Everything is no longer by force. Most people are taking advantage of that situation, even countries. Arbitration. That's what is called arbitration in law. Arbitration goes on between countries and countries. People no longer go to war. If I'm, Nigeria is having a problem with Cameroon, they go through arbitration, no longer going to the uh, international court. So they will appoint arbitra uh, arbitrators who will look at the issues and say, table it before the two countries and say, okay, this is the situation. Can we have a win win, no win win, or win win situation where both of you will be winners and not look at this? That is the way it is done. But if you continue to think that by just killing, Declaring, uh, to, uh, declaring the uh, IPOB as a terrorist group, uh, this and this and whether that is, is not going to solve the problem. If Nandikalu is key today, another person will come back from the southeast, another person will come back from the southwest, another person will come back from the north. We will continue to engage. What I think this government will do is by making sure that most of these agitators and whatever, can we have one day, has the president ever made an attempt, irrespective of whatever anybody says, that we are saying, we are going to say, the president make an attempt and say, can we have, can I have a meeting with these people? Is they are your children. The president is the father of the nation. The president is receiving people, the campaign to, uh, to APC every day and giving them flag and These are even people that are, to me, are not even worth anything. But the ones that are your children, Within your own children, you have some of them that are very, very healthy. For you, because that uh, uh, they are very healthy, them are not thing, you will not discard them among your children. You can't do that as a father. It is your responsibility to be able to call those children together and say, Come, what is your problem? What do you want me to do for you and the rest of them? You solve this, some of this matter. So I think we should be, be able to get a middle ground. Since the issue of cost is not working, can we lose the carrot and stick approach to solve this problem? So that we can move on. Mr. Wandu, uh, let me take you back to something you had initially spoken about, so you can also extend your thoughts on that one. Um, I, I want to know what you think, you know, the, the current administration, um, you know, would be remembered for with regards to their approach towards banditry and the reluctance to declare them terrorists, the reluctance to, um, you know, do, you know, what everyone is expecting must be done in order to end banditry in Nigeria. Um, after the administration leaves office in 2023, do you think they are concerned, you know, that they would be remembered as those who, you know, let the likes of Sheikh Gumi continue to make this type of statements, you know, in the media, um, failed, you know, over time to declare bandits terrorists and, of course, treat them as terrorists, um, but instead are more upset with those who are agitating and seeking a better country for themselves? I hope and I believe that after 2020, after uh, the end of this regime, we have a more pragmatic approach to these issues. What is happening is not, especially now, is because of the body language of the leaders and especially the president, as I put the book right on the table of the president. I said it before, if the president has been decisive in dealing with these people, won't be where we are today. Anybody that supports such 
I don't see a difference between uh, Gumi and whatever Namrikan is doing. If you are saying you are supporting terrorists, then you should also be treated in the same manner. You cannot come out and be telling us that terrorists are not, uh, they are not terrorists, they are bad, they are people that are going about it. By supporting that, that means you are supporting their action. And you should be held responsible for that. So, my belief is that come 2023, depending on who becomes the president, if it's somebody that is more nationalistic and open minded in heart, and um, you take this fairly by the horn, and this might just have bring this to an end. Don't forget what happened before the uh, the coming of Musaya um, uh, during the time of Musaya Adwa. There was serious agitation in the Niger Delta. You saw what was happening in the Niger Delta, but you saw the way Musaya, um, uh, former late President Yara Adwa, handled the issue of the Niger Delta, and it means that everything died down completely. The use of force was used. The carrot and stick approach was also used, and they were made to see reasons. So, and at the end of it all, there was a middle ground. Those that are killing, those, are, those ones are, even have a reason for agitating. Those that are killing in the north now, what is their reason? Is it an, agit is it an agitation? Is it that they are marginalized? Is it that their children are, being, are not being sent to school? Is it because they are not getting what they are supposed to get from Nigeria? It's pure criminality that is going on in the north. And that is why we believe that the president can be more decisive than he is currently. Okay. The hands of our secretary agencies are tied. They cannot act beyond the expectation of the president. And I'm saying it from my own point of view, as a public affairs analyst, not a security expert. Release the hand, unchain the hands of these our security agencies, and you see them do wonder. You cannot expect That's somebody wonderful. to capture a terrorist, hand it over to the government, and you see the same person tomorrow being released. How do you want him to feel? So there must be a situation where, on a daily basis, the governors of Bono State and some of the North would be calling cameramen, calling us journalists to come and see them and uh, releasing uh, so-called repentant this thing and giving them all the necessary publicity and the rest of them does not help matters. Let us be decisive with these people. I'm not for those that say, oh, they must be committed, you get them, kill them. It won't work. Nigeria is a signature to so many um, conventions across the globe that have to do with human rights. So you cannot just pick people and kill them. Even in, in, in what situation, if you capture somebody that you are at war with and raising the white flag, what do you do? You don't kill the person. If you do, you'll be charged to the International Court of uh, Criminal uh, Court. But the situation, as I said, 123, if we're able to get leaders that can see this from, not from a microscopic approach, from a broader, who don't see these people, some people are their brothers, and others are not being their brothers, and the rest of them. That we, don't forget that this started from Fulani Hesmen. Yeah. Right, Mr. Wando, that is where this problem started from. From, from Fulani Hesmen, they now move over to bandits, and now they are terrorists, and the rest of them. Yeah. Something right. must give, and the president must shoot leadership, and that is it for me. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's a very, really, really important conversation. Um, and of course, thank you very much for staying with us. You know, and of course, it, it seems like it was an extended off the press this morning. But thanks uh, once again, and we wish you a very beautiful Tuesday ahead. Thank you for extending me. Wow. You have a nice day. And um, <laughs> now, of course, uh, since we already had mentioned, or he already had mentioned, 2023 as part of our discussions this morning, uh, the Muslim rights concern, uh, Murik has stated that it will only support a Yoruba Muslim candidate for 2023. And we're going to be speaking next with the director of MIRIC, Isha, uh, Professor Ishaka Kintola. He comes up next here on The Breakfast. Good morning. <laughs>